So what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is the capacity to be aware of, manage, and appropriately express your own emotions, and to be aware of and appropriately engage with the emotions of others. This can be challenging enough in any situation, but in the virtual context, the bar is raised to a whole new level. The unique challenges of working in a suddenly remote context can bring all kinds of stresses and strains, not only for you, but for your colleagues as well. It's important to remember that while some people love working remotely and they're living the dream in a nice quiet home office with great equipment and a big picture window overlooking a peaceful scene, for others it's more of a living nightmare. Working at the kitchen table on an old laptop with spotty internet connection and kids interrupting and the dog barking and the whole nine yards. And for many of us it's somewhere in between. In this course, we're not going into all the specific details on the topic of emotional intelligence in and of itself. That's a separate course. We are going to focus on three specific objectives in the context of individual virtual working relationships. First, self-awareness. We'll be highlighting the importance of being mindful of your own emotions and how you manage them amidst whatever virtual challenges you may be facing in this context. Second, we'll talk about listening. We'll look at your strategies for strengthening your listening skills as you work with remote team members. And third, how do you respond? We'll explore options for responding appropriately across a range of emotions using different virtual tools. So why is virtual emotional intelligence so important? Well, if you're a human being and your work involves other human beings, then by definition you will encounter emotions in yourself and in others. And when you're working in the distributed team context, the mechanisms for engaging in those relationships are uniquely challenging. Now, there's some important terms in the definition I stated earlier. Notice that it starts with awareness of your own emotions as well as those of others, and then effectively managing those emotions, not controlling them per se, as in keeping them bottled up or shutting others down. Managing emotions means knowing when to express a certain degree of emotion at the right time to the right people and by the right means. This is uniquely challenging in distributed teams because you aren't going to bump into your colleagues in the break room and ask how they're doing or celebrate the good news in the conference room at your weekly tag up. You have to decide whether to set up a video conference or send an email or a quick text message. Each option has its upside and its downside. So let's start by considering your emotional range. How often do you experience and express various emotions, and how do you respond when others are experiencing strong emotions? On page three in the workbook, there's a model of emotional range across four basic emotions, fear, anger, sorrow, and joy. On a scale of one, a low level of that emotion, to 10, an extreme level of that emotion. When's the last time you experienced each of these emotions on the high end of the scale? What was that like? Did you communicate your emotion to anyone else, or did you keep it to yourself? Do you think you tend to have a narrow range of emotional expression, or do you have a broad range? There's no right or wrong answer. It's about doing some honest self-reflection. If you have a narrow range of emotional expression, you might have a strength of remaining calm, and perhaps you're less prone to getting caught up in your emotions. But conversely, if you have a broad emotional range, you may have a strength of being able to empathize with others who are experiencing emotional extremes themselves. On page four, consider your response to others when they're experiencing strong emotion. How do you respond? Do you tend to engage or withdraw? The intent is to be aware of your own emotional level, to be able to communicate your emotions effectively, and be able to empathize with others. So whether you're motivated by a desire to support and encourage your remote colleagues and build trust amongst your virtual team, or simply driven to achieve greater results, strengthening your virtual emotional intelligence will increase your effectiveness.